Quantum Rabbit, a Frankenstein podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is Roly Skender. This is a program I've made to document the true stories and a bit of the process around my sometimes small, sometimes monstrous projects. It's about my work as an audiovisual producer, mostly based in a small village called Perth on the west coast of Australia. These projects span art, music, theatre and the spaces in between. I hope you enjoy the story. Episode 1. Tree Projections. projections. I wanted to begin this story with a tribute, but maybe that's too dramatic. Uh, It's an acknowledgement and a compliment to the people who first pointed data projectors into trees. In 2014, I was approached by someone I know regarding doing some video projections for the Fairbridge Folk Festival, not far from the town of Pinjarra in Western Australia. I had a lunch meeting with this gentleman at a Vietnamese restaurant in Northbridge. His name is Ian Lilburn, and we discussed, among other things, some of the work he'd been involved with recently. He'd worked with some Eastern States artists for an event featuring large-scale video projections at the University of Western Australia. We'll call it UWA. He was on the board of the Folk World Incorporated Association and wanted to bring some similar, although smaller-scale projections to the Fairbridge Festival that year. But now the other artists had gone home which, let's face it, was why he was talking to me. He was talking a lot about projecting into trees, as he'd worked with an artist called Craig Walsh recently, who apparently did the most artistically developed work at his recent UWA event. That was more or less how he described it to me. I hadn't really pointed projectors into trees in any serious manner before, but I was curious. Ian gave me a DVD to watch from the event, and we parted with a plan to talk again soon. I watched the DVD and I was also mainly impressed with Craig Walsh's tree projections. I looked up some of his other videos online. He was using faces, sometimes what appeared to be live actors. They were projected like giants onto the foliage of large trees and sometimes they'd even look down at the crowd below and speak. It was very spooky and mesmerising. Really beautiful work. Why weren't more people doing this tree projection stuff? It seemed like a simple enough idea. Make some suitable content, point the projector at a good tree. How hard could it be? Well, Ian had explained to me that Craig took a lot of time to get his projections just right. And of course, they only become visible from certain angles. If you were too far off centre, you wouldn't see the effect, due to the angles of light hitting the three-dimensional surface. There are a few other examples online. There's a French photographer called... Clement Briend, who made some very cool images of mythical deities, also mostly faces, in trees in Cambodia, Paris and Berlin. I'm not sure who started doing this first, but something was definitely working here, and I was interested to learn more about this technique. My initial thought was, why were they all faces? What else could you project into trees? I started testing some little tree projections in my backyard, and Here's what I discovered. Faces work because two eyes, a mouth and a nose are kind of hardwired into the way your brain wants to see things. It looks for patterns. I could go into some psychedelic stories from the 90s here, but this is probably not the place. Similar to some psychology experiments that take a very pixelated representation of an iconic portrait, such as Abraham Lincoln or the Mona Lisa, with minimal information approximately 13 squares across and 18 squares high, it's very easy to recognise the content of such a low-detailed image if you're already familiar with the higher-resolution version. The mind fills in the details for us. This could also be described as an optical illusion, and it works with blurred images as well. But I wanted to move away from faces in trees. After all, that had been done before. Also, truth be told, it almost seemed too easy. Just about any old face I projected into a tree from a magazine or something would give a similar look to what I'd already seen. Maybe there was a sense that this work had already been done, and the best you could do with it now was really just copy what had gone before, or at worst, plagiarise. But I was having too much fun to stop now. The challenge was to come up with something new. (laughs) 
I made a little collage from some stock footage of a boobook owl and projected it into a tree on the South Perth foreshore. It was a face, but it wasn't human, and it belonged to the place I come from. I also started playing with computer-generated geometry that could be manipulated and zoomed and rotated in real time by a person standing in front of the tree. This was done using a camera sensor that can detect a person and the position of their limbs in space. The interactive stuff can be fun, but I didn't want it to be the main idea. I started to look at other types of iconography. Images that our brain would already be familiar with. Well, when it came to the Fairbridge Folk Festival, the answer was, fortunately, quite close at hand. I recall many years ago, maybe I was 12 years old, my dad took me along to see an illustration artist who was doing some work for him. This was a little while before mobile phones or even personal computers. My dad sold handheld two-way radios for communication and this artist was drawing a picture of one for some sort of flyer or newspaper ad. I remember him showing my dad the image. It was a finely drawn hand holding a little walkie-talkie device. My dad asked, why the hand? I thought you were just going to draw the radio. The artist explained why the hand was so important. What's the first thing you do when you accidentally cut yourself? You put your hand to the wound. How do businessmen solidify an agreement? They shake hands. A hand is comforting. It conveys trust. Well, there it was, clear as day. Just remembering that little anecdote, I thought I'd found the answer, which of course I hadn't. But not knowing I hadn't, I just kept moving forward. So I made a series of hand projections. They were okay, but they were boring. Maybe because they weren't actually doing anything. At that point, I thought one thing I might try for these folk festival projections was to film hands, but have them playing musical instruments. Guitars, banjo and ukulele. This finally resulted in some work that I was proud of and could call my own. The festival was happy too. I'm not sure if I should say this, but I don't know if that many people came down the hill to see it that first year. But I got some good photos. There was one more experiment I wanted to try with projecting into trees. I'm not that much of a maths brain, but I first need to attempt to describe a mathematical language. It was developed in 1968 by Aristide Lindenmeyer. He was a theoretical biologist and botanist. What he created goes by the name of L-Systems, a set of commands and rules that can be used to mimic plants and growth processes. Some modern 3D design software has little L-system modules which can be used to quickly create 3D models of trees and even trippy fractal stuff. I wanted to use these L-systems to project something more complex onto a tree, namely more tree, branches created from these mathematical formulas. I went into a little nerd hole for uh, probably about two weeks and when I came out it was with something that I thought was quite unique, even if it was another phase. <clears throat> This was the face of a mathematically generated creature I called Tree Boss. His facial outline, eyebrows, nose and mouth were all made of L-system branches. His features moved organically based on randomly generated numbers, almost like they were blowing in the wind. I like to think of him as an algorithmic entity living inside a computer whose image is projected into our three-dimensional world as well as having quite a mysterious air about him. He seems a little unhappy to be here. Maybe even grumpy. He still makes the odd appearance at events when I let him out, generally looking down at the public with digital disdain. But that's just tree boss. He's got his own personality, and that's the kind of tree he likes to be. Tree projections. Bit of a journey through... The art, (coughs) definitely the start of something amazing. Maybe learning to look at video projection as something you don't need a screen for, or even a building. 
Having said that, there's something genuinely enjoyable about shooting beams of light at a gently moving surface which is also alive. But maybe more interesting is seeing people's responses to that. Thanks for listening.